I live on Mount Elgon in Kenya. Though it's beautiful here and looks peaceful, there's been little peace in my lifetime. I am Chelimo and this is my story. When I was five years old, angry men came and killed many of our friends and neighbors. There was fighting everywhere and my father was one of the men who was killed. Our house was burned down and in all the confusion going on, my mother was able to run away with me and my younger brother and sister. We ran to my gogo's house where she lives with my uncle. My mother had to find work as a day laborer and even now. All these years later, she spends her days pounding rocks into gravel. My uncle is drunk most of the time and very angry. He sometimes beats me and chases me into the forest to sleep. I wake before dawn and come home as my mother is leaving for her work. Then I go down to the river to fetch water which I carry back on my head. I've been doing this since I was a little girl, so my neck is strong. The water is not very clean, but it's all we have to drink to cook with and to wash with. My little sister has been very sick several times from drinking it. I gather sticks and twigs to build a fire. So I will cook ugali for breakfast. How much better it will taste with some beans or lentils on it, but I must not think of that now. I must still get my siblings ready for the day, both dressed, fed, and off to school. My biggest desire is to be able to go to school. It is supposed to be free in Kenya, but there are fees for books and uniforms must be purchased. It's a constant struggle between buying food enough to sustain us or paying the school fees. Sometimes I go for a few days, but we are able to pay a few shillings. But then the money runs out and they send me home for lack of fees. On this day, I set the long walk to school. A boda boda comes by and slows down. The man offers me a ride, but I look straight ahead and keep on walking. My friend Dorcas accepted a ride from one of these men, but instead of taking her to school, he drove into the forest and there he raped her. She now has a baby and had to quit school. I do not want that to happen to me. At school, I try really hard to concentrate. My dream is to become a teacher. I need good grades, but I worry about what's happening at home. Is Gogo okay? Is Mama okay at work? The sun gets hot beating down on her all day at truck pile and she has nothing to take to eat. Are the kids okay? What about Uncle George? Natalie has been looking at me differently and it frightens me. I pass a church and wonder what it will be like. Just go in and sit for a few minutes and talk to God. Does he really exist? I have learned a few songs about him, but it is hard to believe the words. I have so many questions. I hear Mama and Gogo whispering about me. 
It is time for Chelimo to experience becoming a woman. She is no longer a child. Mama says, Gogo agrees and replies, I should be the one to catch her, since I am the one with experience. They explain to me what will happen. FGM. A cutting ceremony to prepare me for marriage. A rite of passage. They say no man will want me if I am not cut. I do not want a man. I just want to go to school. But what a choice do I really have? Dream of becoming a teacher but with no one to help me with the school fees? How will that ever happen? And I think about my cousin Rai. She went through the cutting ceremony and she was sick for a very long time. They thought she was to die. She quit school. Then an old man of 50 years came and paid some money to marry her. Now she has two babies and he has left her for his wife and children. Is this what I have to look forward to? Is this all that is ahead of me? God, are you there? And then one day it happened. A woman came to visit from one of the local churches. Her name is Jail. She tells my mama about a program for girls of my age who are getting ready to pass from childhood to young womanhood. She invites me to come for a week. They call it Vuka Rite of Passage Camp. Jail says that God has a wonderful plan for my life and that here I can learn about him. Can it be that God has heard the cry of my heart? My prayer. I beg my mind to go to let me go. They hesitate. All customs die hard. My story has not ended. There are many pages here to be written, but this is a good chapter. At Vuka, I met Jesus. He has given me a new identity. I am a princess, a daughter of the king. I am learning that there is a time for everything and this is the time to go to school so that I can have hope of a better future. When once I fell invisible, I feel noticed and loved and cared for. I am known by the God of the universe who created me with a purpose. I signed a purity commitment and I meant to keep it. My life has been changed and there is no turning back. Empower Hope, the people who create VUCA program, has agreed to pay all of my school fees. My mama and Gogo came to the last day of a camp where there was a big celebration. When they heard what God was doing and saw what a difference it had made in my life, they decided to, to be Christ followers too. Eventually, even my uncle came to know Jesus. Now we are working together to make life better for my younger siblings. It's still hard on our hearts and true empower hope he is using men as we listen to us pray for us and encourage us we all say god has come to the mountain i am chelimo and this is my story